Hey there, friends. I have two new decks I wanted to just do quick looks at through, quick look throughs at for you. Um, and they're both, you know, they're both sort of curios in their way. I choose that word specifically. Um, so these both came in yesterday and I've had some time to play with them a little bit and I really like both of them. Um, so the first, well, really the second, because I'm going to talk about this one second, is the Sheridan Douglas. Uh, I'll move that over the side. And then the other one is the Tarot of Musterberg which um, is a Curio for real because it is produced by Curio and Company. Um, so let me get the light right. Whoopsie. All right. So the funny thing about this deck was that um, Anaconda recommended this to me because she said it's a ginger deck. <laughs> and really it is. Most of the cards in this deck have red hair. Um, so I ordered it and it got lost in the mail and the folks at Curio and company were really great. They, they tried to, you know, they're in Austria. They tried to work with the U S post office to figure out where it was cause it had made it here and it got lost somewhere in New York. So, um, not, nothing really helped. So they very generously sent me another copy once their second edition came out. So this is a new print, but from what I understand, it's pretty much like the first, um, so it comes with a little white book, and actually it's a, uh, it's a fairly, you know, it's a little white book that, um, has a lot of stuff in it. It actually has game rules, and then on the other half, half is cardomancy. Now, um, the interesting thing about this deck and about Curio in general is that they, um, they sort of publish comic books and, and things, and so, um, they have sort of this fictional history that goes with this deck, which is kind of interesting. Uh, and the story, you can look it up on their website, but the story is that it's from uh, uh, an amusement park called Pennyland, where uh, all of the staff would read fortunes on the midway, and it's it's really uh, sort of a plot point or a moment in plot from a, a comic book that they produce. Um, but so the box, you know, is really cute. Uh, it feels really nice. So it says Tower of Musterberg 79 card deck for gameplay and cardomancy. Um, on the back, there's one extra card, which is the Siren, which is here. And while I do plan on using this deck, I don't plan on keeping that card in. But I just wanted to say here, too, the box has this little narrative here. Um, well, yeah, Curio and Company takes no responsibility for prognostications issued by these cards, including but not limited to riches, marriages, or death, and accepts no liability for points lost during gameplay. Receive or deal a hand at your own risk. So, uh, it's very cute. So, that's the extra card here, the Siren. Um, this cardstock is... So, he, I, there's a blank card that it comes with and I wanted to sort of share. Um, it is really amazing cardstock. It's raw paper, but it's not paper. It's not laminated. It's it's dry. You have to feel it to, to believe it. It it reminds me a little of Ilminigello stock because of its rawness, but um, it's really unlike anything else I've ever um, encountered. And it shuffles beautifully. I will show you that uh, in just a moment. So it is a Marseille style deck. So I'll move through it pretty quickly just so you can get a flavor of it. Um, so here's the fool, and and it is very um, it is very redheaded. <laughs> Almost all the characters have red hair, which is funny, because when I had hair, I did have red hair. Um, so there's the magician, there's the high priestess, the empress, the emperor. Um, so you can see that it is, it's got a sort of light quality. This, this would be a nice, so this is a limited edition, I should say, it's produced in 500, but they just started selling this, this release, so it's out there, and I'll, I'll, um, try to remember to put the link to Curio and Company below. Um, so here's the Emperor. It's got a light quality to it. This might be something, you, you know, you could give to someone again who's interested in starting out with Marseille but isn't super in love with the Marseille decks that exist. Um, because these people, you know, Marseille cards can kind of look blank or um, even sort of unhappy, um, but these these cards don't. There's a very sort of, like, gentle quality to these, and they're very cute, but not not cloying, not silly. Um, so. Um, the Hermit. Very young 
looking hermit with bright red hair. Fortitude. So, I mean, as you can see, it's pretty straight up Marseille in structure. The only real change is that the creature replaces the devil, and then there's an extra card that follows the world, the siren, but you can just take that out. Um, so it's the stars rather than the star, the moon, the sun, very sweet. Although, again, jacked children are always interesting in Marseille decks. Judgment's cute, too. And then the world. Um, and the, the pips are pips, so I'll just sort of go through them really quickly. Uh, I do find these actually really easy to see the number of, for the most part. There are a couple that are a little harder to detect, but, you know, I mean, it's... So in this regard, it looks a little bit more like the Neo Classico rather than Marseille, because you don't have... You know, the Marseille-style pips are very specific, right? Um, these aren't that. These are more like the Neo Classico or the Vichetta or sort of Italian-style um, post-Sforza decks. And then the courts are the courts. Um, so here's the cups. And I'll just sort of... I won't go through card by card. Um... So they're called chalices in this deck. Swords. So again, pretty straightforward. Court of Swords. And then finally coins look like this. Really beautiful. And then again. These are a little more Marseille in that way. And then again the court. So, let's shuffle this, because this is one of the most satisfying shuffles you're likely to find in a tarot deck for some odd reason. So, it's thick. You know, it's thicker than a normal tarot deck, I would say. Um, but it overhand shuffles really well, but it also um, riffle shuffles really well, which is just, you know, my favorite thing in the world. Yes. Very satisfying feel to it. So, um... So I love shuffling. Whoa, that was pretty dramatic, huh? I love shuffling this deck so far. Uh, and also, I don't know if you can see it, but the card backs are actually sort of distressed on purpose. So you can sort of see that there's like little skips in the, the ink and whatnot. It's meant to look aged. Um, so, and it does. I think it's really, really successful. So that is the Tarot of Musterberg, which I'm happy to have after many, many months after having ordered it. Um, next up is the Sheridan Douglas Tarot, which, so this is a deck from the 70s, and this is actually one of the first decks I ever saw in the very first book I ever bought, uh, and I'll show you the card in particular that captured my attention. But at that point, it was, I think, a book from the 80s, and this was the early, no, it was the mid late mid-90s, yeah, um, and uh, the deck was long out of print. What I didn't know in the intervening years was that in about, 10 years ago, it, um, it, they, they reissued a sort of refreshed version of it, the, the family of the artist. Um, so David Sheridan is the artist. It was, um, inspired by the, um, book by Alfred Douglas, The Tarot, Origins, Meaning, and Uses of the Cards. They have brought that book back, um, but it's also available sort of in used editions, too. Uh, so I have that book winging its way to me, but uh, just because I'm curious. Now it's an interesting thing with this with this book because um, Alfred Douglas was the name. So if you if you have any sort of literature background, Alfred Douglas was the name of Oscar Wilde's 
lover and Oscar Wilde's father, no, Alfred Douglas's father, um, was the one who accused Oscar Wilde of homosexuality and got him basically a, the 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 trial that pursued there was a libel trial and then that essentially got Oscar Wilde landed in jail. So it was an interesting thing. And I was told at a certain point that that was the same Alfred Douglas who wrote this book, but it's not. So um, for anyone who's curious, it is not that same one. That Alfred Douglas was known as Bosey. This was Alfred Douglas. Um, so this is an interesting deck because it lives somewhere between, it's, it's Golden Dawn inspired. Alfred Douglas was inspired by the Golden Dawn. He studied with a woman who had worked with Aleister Crowley, um, and so he was very influenced by the, the Golden Dawn. Um, and as such, you'll actually see some Rider Waite Smith connections, but you'll actually see some non Rider Waite Smith connections too. So this sort of lives somewhere between the Marseille tradition and the Rider Waite Smith tradition, which I really like. Um, it does come with a little pamphlet that it's not a little white book, it actually folds out, and there are a couple spreads in there and card meanings. Um, but again, the book that, that Douglas, uh, that, um, uh, yeah, Douglas, Alfred Douglas wrote, um, is, is, you can find it pretty cheaply on Amazon, used, etc. if you're curious. So I'm gonna look at it and glance at it just because I'm curious about what he had to say about it. I like reading books about tarot even if I'm not necessarily going to let them influence me. Um, so stylistically this is very early 70s inspired. The colors are very bright and boom. Um, the, the images that I had seen of this deck before were all of vintage copies of this deck. So the paper was a little yellowed and the colors were a little muted. So I was a little sort of like, whoa, with, with, with this deck when I saw it. But I did a reading with it um, and it, it, it reads really sort of like Oof. as as sort of um, uh, aggressively as it were as its coloration in a way. Um, so yeah, um, I think it's it's great. It's weird though. I don't think this is for everybody, but I think it's great. And I think you know, for anyone who thought this was out of print, it's not. Now it's hard to get in the United States, like many things. But if you go to SheridanDouglas.com or Sherid, excuse me, SheridanDouglas.co.uk. Again, I'll try to leave that below. You can get it from the artist's site, the, fa the family of the artist, less expensively than anywhere else. Now, if you're in the U.S., it's going to come from the U.K., so clearly there's going to be shipping. But um, if you try to find it on eBay or if you try to find it on Amazon, you're going to end up paying more. Um, even if you go to Amazon.co.uk, the shipping is, is going to get you, apparently. So check out the, the website of the artist. And again, I'll try to link that below. Um... So, again, let's just sort of look through the cards here. It's a really interesting, and the minors in this are interesting, as interesting as the majors, too. Um, so here's the Fool, very Marseille style. But then we get this Magician, who is not at all um, your Marseille style. It's, it's um, very, in a way, sort of um, comic book or, or manga, in a way. The Papess. Um... The backs are interesting. It's this purple sort of backing, which I like. It doesn't necessarily feel like this deck, per se, but um, I, I do like it. Here's the Empress card. So this was the card that originally made me want the deck. Again, I saw this picture in a book, and I thought, oh, I love that art style. And I, as soon as I saw the card, I instantly remembered seeing it in that book and thinking, oh, yeah, this is why I wanted that. So it's really, I don't know, I just love that card. Love the Horn of Plenty. Um... I, I just love it. Um, Emperor, the Pope. So what I guess happened with this reissue was that they scanned in all the original line drawings and then recolored to match um, using digital um, artists. Uh, so it, it's, it's supposedly the same coloration as the original deck, but done in mo using modern techniques. Uh, the colors are, there's, I mean, there's nothing muted about this deck. This deck is all exclamation points. Um, but I do really like it, I have to say. It is not your average deck. Um, it is, I don't, I don't, I can't think of anything this reminds me of. Uh, whoops. Um, maybe in some cases, like the, um, 
the, oh gosh, what is that bizarrely colored Rhino Wade Smith deck with the white back and the Ankh? The Paladino? I can't remember. But color, coloration wise, it may do that. Now, I'm interested to see the book eventually because the coloring of this deck is really, uh, seems very specific, but really unusual. Um, and like when you get into the minors, it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of like consistency from from suit you know what I mean like and so you know like the suit of pentacles isn't all green say or blue it's like there's a lot of overlap but the choices seem really deliberate so I'm curious to see if there's any connection between like here the devil you'll see is all green and then another card in the suit of pentacles is all green and I'm just curious if there was any intentionality but I'm sure there was behind the color choices and the way that the colors link um because they don't, they're not linked by suit. Um, but they, there are, I mean, some of the choices are really not what you would expect. So it's, it's cur it's curious. Um, so these are the majors. They're actually pretty straightforward for the most part. Um, other than this very unique, very specific art style. Um, so, but that, you know, they're, they're fairly straightforward in that regard. Uh, not much dramatic. Uh, now, the way that the suits work is that you don't always have the number of suit items, um, but what you do have in the upper left corner is a suit symbol and a number, which actually um, I like. It makes it easy to see. So here's the Ace of Batons. And then again, you know what I mean? It's a very, some of it's Rider Waite Smith, some of it's not remotely. Here for the two, um, you've got someone sort of creating a spark here. Um, and it's, it's not, I mean, you could sort of see a connection to what Waite and Smith made, but not, you know, it's very different. Um, and then the three of wands has no wands in it, and you've got a dolphin uh, and a boat. And so again, you know, it's it's really curious. It's Stephen Bright's video on this deck, he actually reads the description of this card from the book, so um, you can sort of get a sense of it. But I like that. You know, you know, I like it when they sort of mess with the tradition. Uh, look at this four of wands. You know what I mean? Like I really we've got um, a uh, a brush and a quill and a sculpting tool and a flute. You know, so for the suit of wands, which to me has a lot to do with. Um, vocation and, and, and creativity, I really like that. Um, and then we're back to conflict with the five. There's a very sort of um, 70s style to that conflict though. Here we have what looks like a Marseille style or a Pip style six, but then this wreath sort of ties it right into the traditional Waitsmith meaning. And then this is pretty straight up Waitsmith. And then these adjustments are so interesting. And I like it again, you know, I like that I have room here to explore more than just the traditional Waitsmith meanings, which I'm sure people are sick of hearing me say. But again, it's like, I just, I really like this. Um, you know, it, and, and while the colors I don't necessarily find attractive, I find them arresting. Um, so while I probably would not have colored this deck this way, it's hard not to be like drawn into them. Uh, oh, the suits also have a suit symbol. So the page has a little chess piece and the knight has a rook and the queen has a crown and the king has a crown. Um, but you can see the coloration is not expected, you know, but there must be some intentionality behind it. Um, so I'm curious with the book. So now we're in the suit of cups really like this two of cups it's sort of this amorphic amoebic energy of of unity and duality and, and stuff stuff and then i like this three right because of growth uh and and coming together and creating and for you know fertilizing and building and then again we have a fairly rider weight smith four and five but then the six is very different so I'm, I'm really intrigued by this deck. Um, but you can see what I mean about the coloring. It is not expected. It is not... Um, but it doesn't feel random. Pretty standard issue 8. Pretty standard 10. The Knave. 
the knight, the queen, king. It's a very happy king of cups there. Now we get into the suit of swords, which I'm always curious about, and I have done many a monologue about recently, and I fear that I have upset folks, so I apologize again if my theories about this stuff are upsetting, but I just want people to sort of hear my thoughts, right? Um, so here's the suit of swords, and a lot of this I really like because it is really interesting. Um, and this sort of action in this two of wands is kind of amazing. Uh, very, like, I don't even know how to describe it. Fair faucet. But this three of swords, right? So different and so unusual and really... Um, again, I, I appreciate this sort of, I feel like you can get that Rider Waite Smith meaning, but there's so much else you could explore with that. And then the four is really interesting too, because it's a chess game and it looks like you, you can't tell if someone's sort of resting or being bored. Here's the five. And you know, just these eyes and then, um, the swords, but it's, it's sort of, you get the similar to the Rider Waite Smith, but you also get something very different. The six, you still have movement, but it's not, you know, it's not your ship. And then the seven is very different, but you do have in the back there someone sneaking away. It's hard to see because it's so dark, but it's almost the Rider Waite Smith from the other vantage point. It's the eight. And the nine. Then we get into the Knave of Swords. I like the word Knave. Knight, Queen, and King. And I'm wondering if there's elemental associations to the coloration of the courts. Um, again, I'll sort of, you know, and if it's worth doing a video about, I, I will do a video when I get the book, but if it's not, I won't. So here we get the Ace of Coins. Two of Coins, pretty, pretty faithful, pretty faithful three. Four, I really like, because again, you sort of have a connection to Rider Waite Smith, but again, it's a very different and much more elastic image. Five, six, seven, eight, it's pretty standard, nine, ten is very Rider Waite Smith except for the Tree of Life form. And then we get the, the court, the knave, the knight, the queen, and the king. Now, this cardstock is really interesting too. As you can probably tell, it's very glossy. It's really sturdy. I love the really super rounded edges on it. That's, you know, just something you don't see a lot that the edges are rounded that much. Um, I think this actually is probably similar cardstock, maybe a little bit thicker to the Robert M. Place reissue of the Alchemical, uh, not the Alchemical, uh, the, the, not the reissue, but the Tower of the Sevenfold Mystery. Um, but it's very stiff, but it does shuffle nicely. Um, there's a little, you know, it, it was a little, not sticky, but again, toothy when I got it, but um, even just after using it a few times, it seems to have relaxed a little bit. So I imagine that breaking it in will will make it shuffle more easily. Um, and then again, laying it out, it's a really interesting thing to sort of look at from a layout because the colors are so intense, you know, and, and primary. Um, so, you know, you definitely get a very visceral reaction to them. In fact, uh, whoa, I read for someone and, and she told me, oh my God, like I'm, I'm sort of like, these colors are not pretty, but I'm kind of obsessed by them. Um, and they really create a sort of physical reaction to them. Um, so I'm, again, I'm curious, I'm hopeful that in the book, now in the book by Alfred Douglas, again, the, um, the art is in black and white and these were sort of colored and, and printed after that book came out. So I think the, the art was created for the book, 
Um, and then after the book, they became cards. But I'm, I'm curious if they were influenced at all. So anyway, um, those are two interesting new decks. Um, both are available, if not easy to get. So Curio & Co. Um, is the company here. And then Sheridan Douglas. Uh, again, I'll do my best to remember to put the links in there. But um, really interesting new decks into the collection. So I hope you enjoyed.